Let's see, Gordon's hangar door is closed. Brian's hangar door is closed. Once again, I'm the only one flying. But I have a mission today. Today, I'm gonna go up and verify my fuel burn. Because if you watch my last video, uh, I was getting between like four and a half and 4.9 gallons per hour is what's indicated here. And I was looking back at my plate test book that I had when I was doing the initial plate testing on here. And I would get, you know, I had 5.5 as my fuel burn. And I don't think anything's changed since then other than the setting on the prop. So what I want to do today is verify my fuel burn. And the way I'm going to do that is I've topped off my tanks and I'm on the left tank right now. So I'm going to start taxi, take off, climb on the left tank. And I'm going to switch to the right tank in the air. I'm going to fly for an exactly an hour on that tank. And then switch back to the left tank, come back and land, and then refill the right tank and see how much, see how many gallons I put in. So I, I think that'll give me a pretty accurate way to test it again. Because uh, I want to see, every time I flight plan, I've always flight planned for six gallons an hour. And I, I got that number because, like I said, when I was doing the flight testing, uh, I was getting about five and a half gallons per hour in cruise, and then I figured I'd just round it to six because that'll, uh, you know, if I'm going on a cross country, that accounts for maybe more of the fuel burn on the climb. So I've just kind of always planned six gallons per hour when I, you know, when I'm going on a long cross country or something. So, head temperature. I think just for fun, I'm going to go up today. It's a really nice day. Uh, looks like there's hardly any wind. So I'm just going to go up, and uh, when I switch to the right tank, I'll start the timer. Cylinder and uh, I think I'll just set the RPM at like 2,700 RPM and just leave it. Because if I'm going on a cross country, that's that's usually the RPM I fly Cylinder at. Cylinder head temperature. So again, once I come back and land, I'll Cylinder refill the right tank and uh, measure exactly how many gallons I put in there. And that should tell me how many I burned in that hour. So to show you what I'm going to do, I have a dyno on here, I can go to menu, and then here's a timer. I hit the timer, and I'll just hit run. I'll let that go for an hour, and I'll hit stop, and then I can zero it back out, and then exit out of there, but I can time for an hour right here on the dyno. On my last video, I think it was my last flying video I made, I did a, a really short takeoff. I put in uh, flaps, went to the end of the runway, put the brakes on, Gave it full power, released the brakes, and I wanted to see how, how quickly I could get off the ground. I think today, because there's no wind here, it's really nice and calm. I'm taking off with zero flaps, and I'm going to try to make this just the smoothest takeoff I could possibly do. Instead of holding full back pressure, I just hold a little bit, let the nose wheel come off, let the airplane fly off when it's ready. Just for fun. Just need to try different things. So let's see how nice and smooth I can make this. Obviously the takeoff roll will be a little bit longer now. Press driving, something like Delta uh, departing G7 in price. All right, here we go. Nice and smooth. Woo, still pretty quick. I'm climbing out at 70 knots right now, and I'm seeing 1,200 feet a minute. Looks like we're gonna need some cabin heat today. It's still cold out here in Michigan. But the heat feels good. As soon as I open it, I can feel the heat. It works nice. Price driving some of my Delta departing to the south at Price. All right, I've leveled off here at 3,100. Well, I want 3,200. I always like to pick a weird altitude, like 3,200 feet instead of 3,000, just because most people are gonna be at 2,500 feet, 3,000, so I figure if I'm at 32 or 28 or whatever, then it's just kinda, there's probably nobody else at this altitude. 
All right, so I want to get it trimmed out. I want to get that power set to 2700. All right, it's 2710. That's as close as I'm going to get. I just locked the friction knob, and I... We'll just leave it there. Right now, I'm getting 98 knots indicated. 101 true. All right, now, let's go to menu, timer, and I'm going to go hit run, switch to the right tank. We're going to let that go for an hour. So I'm just going to go play around for an hour. You guys notice I, I mounted the cameras in a little bit different spot on the airplane. The wing mount camera I mounted a little bit lower on the strut. This camera up here is a little bit different, or a little bit lower on the bar. And then uh, the camera behind me, I usually have mounted to the side window, and now I have it mounted to the top window. So they're all in just a little bit different position. Just to try to change it up a little bit. I still want to get one more GoPro. I should just go on Amazon or whatever and buy one. I'd like to have four. I'd like to have one more. Maybe way out on the wing tip or something like that, or on the top of the fuselage, or somewhere just for another interesting view. So I don't have the same three views all the time. Makes it harder to edit the video. The more cameras you have, you have to you have to sync all of the cameras so the audio is the same. And then uh, you know now you have four four uh, different views to select from as you're editing the video. All right, just for your FYI, 99. Well, there's 100 knots indicated. True is 103. And remember, this is knots, not miles an hour. The Zenith Cruiser is really a good, stable airplane when there's no wind. If there's wind and it's bumpy, just like any little light sport airplane, it's going to get bumped around. But when there's no wind, you can see just how stable this airplane is. Sometimes, and I know you guys know this and you've done this too, it's not like, um, you know, some super pilot that came up with this, but with an airplane like this, if, if I'm flying hands off and I notice that I'm going down a little bit, I can sometimes just lean back like that and it'll bring the nose up a little bit. Or if the nose is coming up a little bit, I can lean forward and the nose will come down. I know you can't see it on my screen, but I can see the nose going up and down as I lean back and forward. This is kind of fun to do. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna fly for an hour, so I guess I'll check back with you then. on the top of the screen here, our timer, we're at 59 minutes and 40 seconds, so I'll just go ahead and tap on that. That brings up the timer, and uh, in 13 or 12 seconds, I will switch back to the left tank, we'll head back to price, land, and then fill up the right tank, and see how many gallons we put in. So there's a minute, let's go down here to the left tank. Hit stop on here, zero, close that out, and I'll head back home.
And if we look on here, it says there was 5.7 gallons, 5.7 gallons used total. And uh, the average fuel burn when I was up there was 4.8. That's what it stayed at pretty much the whole time. So I'll shut the engine down and fill the right tank and uh, see how accurate that is. Turn the lights off. Now I have a mark on this can at exactly one gallon. So I've put one gallon of fuel in there. I'll dump that into the wing. And I'm going to do this five times or however much I need to to fill the wing. But uh, doing it one gallon at a time will let me see exactly how much uh, I'm putting in. Now generally I probably wouldn't recommend refueling your airplane in the hangar just in case something happens. but. The hangar door was open and I wanted to fuel the airplane in the same spot as it was earlier because my hangar floor slopes towards the door and I just wanted it to be exactly in the same position. This is gallon number six that I'm putting in and it's not all going to fit but we'll see what's left in the container and then that will tell me how many gallons total I've added to this wing to fill it back up full. All right guys, and now the results for my fuel flow test. This is gallon number six that I put back into the right tank. And the best that I can determine, there's about a fifth of a gallon left in here, which means I put 0.8 gallons, I mean 0.8 of this gallon in there. So that would be 5.8 gallons total. And you'll remember on the Dynon, it was indicating 4.8 uh, for, for the, that whole hour. So it's off by a gallon an hour. So the next question might be, how is it measuring the fuel flow. Now, when I installed this engine, I bought two of these red cubes, which is a fuel flow transducer that Dynon, they're, they're from Dynon. And one of them would go on the inlet line and one of them would go on the, the exit line or the return line, I should say. And I even made these real nice mounting brackets to, to mount them onto the engine mount. But as I was doing that, I talked to Ray at UL Power and he's explaining that I don't need these because the Dynon and the engine through one of the wires, and I forget which one, but it will talk to each other, and however it measures it, it can determine the fuel flow. And it didn't make sense to me at the time how that would actually work, but apparently it does, but uh, it's off a little bit. So I, don't, I have to maybe reach out to Ray again and uh, kind of refresh my memory on exactly how that's measuring the, the fuel flow. And then maybe in the dyno, there's an adjustment. So if I know it's off a gallon an hour, maybe there's an adjustment I can make for that. But honestly, I'm not really too concerned about it because I never flight plan based on what, you know, it's telling me it's burning an hour. This is kind of like my Mooney. I know when I flew my Mooney, no matter what I did, it was 10 gallons an hour on the nose. So I always flight plan 10 gallons an hour and I was fine. In here, like I said at the beginning of the video, I always flight plan six gallons an hour. And, you know, that accounts for a little bit more in the climb and a little bit less during a descent. So if I'm ever going on a cross country, like when I flew out to the Zenith homecoming or I went to Oshkosh, like I said, I just planned six gallons an hour and I think that's pretty accurate. Um, but it would be interesting to see if I could make an adjustment in there to, to account for that error of one gallon per hour. So at least now I know it's 4.8 or 5.8 gallons an hour that it's gonna burn. And uh, like I said, when I do go on a long cross country, I'm usually probably 2,700 RPM. Uh, 2,800 is the max. Yeah, but it's, you know, I could fly it at 28, but it's just louder and it vibrates more at 28. 27 is kind of a nice compromise between nice and smooth and having a fast cruise speed. So it, that's why I did this test at, at 2700 RPM. So there it is, 5.8 gallons an hour. And uh, I flight plan six and I've got 20, 25 gallons total. No, 30 gallons. There's 15 gallon tanks. So 30 gallons total in the airplane. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope this uh, was some, some good information for you. Maybe you can compare it to your engine. If you have a different engine, uh, post your, your info down below. Let me know what kind of cruising speeds you get and uh, your fuel burns. It's kind of interesting to compare them. So uh, that's it. I guess we'll see you on the next video.